So if you want to learn more about filters, uh, let me give you some resources. Back in the day when I was uh, pretending to be an electrical engineer, um, I needed a particular filter for a product. In fact, it was the power meter that I built. And uh, I didn't know a lot about filters. So um, one thing that I always say is, uh, you know, learn it when you need it. <laughs> and I needed it, so I needed to learn it. So um, back then there was no internet. Um, basically you needed to get all your information from people or books. And, uh, I got this book here, the electronic filter design handbook, and it's quite good. Uh, it starts out with <laughs> page one is, uh, poles and zeros. Um, not that you really need that to do real work, <laughs> but it, it is interesting theoretically. So, um, there's a lot of math involved, and so engineers simplify things. So instead of frequency, um, they multiply it by 2 pi, and they call it omega. And then instead of that, they put a j in front of it, and um, which is square root of negative 1, because everybody else uses i, but engineers want to use j. What that does is two things. The, putting 2 pi in front of the F turns it into radian units, and then the imaginary number is a way to not have to do trigonometry, okay? <laughs> it's just a math trick. And so it simplifies things. And then they say, okay, we're going to simplify it even more. We're going to say... Uh, there's just these functions of s, and 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 uh, there's a numerator, a numerator, and a denominator. Okay, so if you have some transfer function, you start with something and you end up with something else, right? That could be gain, or that could be phase shift, or that could be other things, right? But you start with one thing and you end up with another thing, and so you have this equation that is some thing divided by some thing. And if the thing on the top ever ends up being zero, you call that a zero. And if the thing on the bottom ever ends up being zero, you call that a pole. And that's the idea of poles and zeros. So, um, And then you can work through math and you can graph it and you can do all sorts of things. And then you start... Uh, uh, finding that there are these polynomials that can, can describe certain filter behaviors. And um, then you say, okay, well, some of those things are nice and smooth, like a Butterworth filter, and some of those things are wavy, like a Chebyshev filter, but it maybe it rolls off faster, but it's wiggly in the passband where the Butterworth is flat in the passband, and maybe there's some other filters. There's a ton, a ton of filters, not just these two, right? So then you can say, okay, well, we can describe a particular thing using a particular uh, polynomial, and then we can solve these polynomials, and we can get certain coefficients, and so what you do is you let all of these engineers do all the hard work for you, okay? <laughs> and then they end up with these uh, normalized filters. So you can see that this filter ends up being all resistors are 1 ohm. And all uh, capacitors will be 1 farad uh, normally. And then you, you say, okay, well, when you solve these equations, these... these uh, capacitors end up having certain weighting factors, okay? And this is like the basic one. And then you can just say, okay, well, instead of a 1K resistor, I'm going to use a 10K resistor. And instead of a 0 0.1392 farad capacitor, I'm going to use a 0 0.0139 capacitor. And you can just scale these things. And you, you scale them using units of radians, and uh, the amount of gain that you want in the system and stuff. Anyway, you you can scale these things. And so, um, so what do you do? Well, like I said, I needed to know a particular filter, so I bought the book. And the only thing I really needed out of the book was this. <laughs> I needed a table. Uh, 
And the table solves all of those equations and just gives you the normalized coefficients for these things. And you just go down and you say, I want a certain number of poles because I want a certain roll off and I want a certain topology of filter and everything. And you just look it up in the book. So is that what people do today? No. All right. There's computers today. And uh, so there are are places you can just go online and it just tells you exactly what you need. So there's no reason to buy a book. There's no reason to buy theory to learn that. Well, I guess there's reasons to learn theory if you want to know the underlying everything. But if you just want to make things work, if you just want to make it go, then you just go to these sites and it'll design the filter for you. And I'll show you one of those. All right. Um, I don't know what this book costs or even if it's valid these days. I'm sure it's valid these days, but uh, people just don't buy books anymore, right? Um, but there is uh, f some books that have gone in into public domain in some weird ways. Anyway, you can find them online. And one is the, uh, uh, I think it's called the Active Filter Cookbook by Lancaster. Let let's go take a look at that. All right, here it is. Uh, if you search for Don Lancaster's Active Filter Cookbook, you will find a PDF. There's, there's many sites that have PDFs of, the, of this book. Uh, it's in the 17th classic printing now. Very nice. Um, and uh, let's see, this one was 1995. The original one was 1975. So this book's been around a long time. So this is a great book. It's free. It's got everything you want to know into it. And it's written in a way that you don't need an engineering degree, right? So it, it's very nice. It t tells you about shapes of filters. Uh, it It goes into like, some ones that these are just things that work and it gives you um, different topologies tells you all the nomenclature it goes into a long section on op amps and stuff which I didn't find too too useful it goes, it, and it goes into the, all of the J omegas and all that stuff and the uh, polynomials with poles and zeros and stuff. You can learn all that in this book too. But then you end up with things like this, which I think are the most valuable things. So here's a first order high pass filter and you can see everything is normalized to one. And then it tells you how to scale it from there. Um, and let's go to something a little bit more complicated. Yeah, here's a nice, uh, here's a nice second order low pass uh, cell and key type design. And you can see everything is normalized to one, right? One ohm, one farad. And then the only thing that's scaled is the uh, gain, which is uh, one in the bottom resistor and two minus D in the top resistor. And then it gives you some equations and stuff. So anyway, you, you can get all you need to get out of this, uh, out of this uh, book here. It, it, it's really, really clever you kind of start to also get the sense of um, the kind of the hand waviness of the Salen key. So the reason the Salen key invented the filter he did, if it was one guy, Salen and key, I don't know. I don't even know now. Anyway, um, he was trying to build really low frequency filters and ended up having these huge inductors that were just unruly. And he goes, I want these really low frequency stuff, but I don't want to have these really, really large inductors. So the trick here, if you look at page 57 here, is that we're trying to do this LC filter. And it's getting unruly. So we're going to build it all out of capacitors, and we're going to replace that inductor with a capacitor. And we're going to do that by putting it in the feedback path. And if you put a capacitor in a feedback path, it turns into an inductor. And if you put an inductor in a feedback path, it turns into a capacitor. It's kind of a weird thing. But anyway, all the math is in here. Um, and here's, it, 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 it's really, really good. It's a, it's, this is just an excellent book. Um, it has some of those tables in the back too. Here, here you can see the lumpiness of Chebyshev's and stuff. Um, best delay, the flattest, yeah, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, I think in the back though, it does have, yeah, here's, here's a bunch of Salen keys in the back. Um, so you can learn all about those and you can get my board and try them all out, try different values out and stuff. I think in the back there were, uh, 
Uh, maybe I'm remembering wrong. I thought I thought there was a bunch of uh, tables in this book too, but it must be in the. Um, he's in all. He's all in the graphs. You know, read, read them off the graphs. The other book has a bunch of tables and stuff. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is a great resource. Now, the other resource that I said was going online. So let's do that. So I'm sure there's a bunch of websites, but this is the one that I know of and I like. Um, this one is Texas Instruments. It's webbench.ti.com filter design tool. So you can say, okay, I want, I want one of these things. I want a low pass filter. Um, and I want certain parameters. Uh, let's say that I want to I'll check this one here. I want a Butterworth filter and I'm going to select and it says topology Salon key. And then you can put in numbers for the uh, things. It'll tell you magnify. It's basically a, uh, spice model of the whole filter and stuff, right? And uh, you can say, oh, instead, now I want a multiple feedback one instead of Salon key. And uh, you can say, okay, create design. Uh, let's see here. Does it? No, I don't want to do that. Uh, let's see here. How do I? Oh, let's see here. How do I get to the? How do I get to it? Let me try one of these out. I think you have to go back to the beginning. You actually have to type in numbers. You can say, I want this frequency and this roll off, this many poles, or this many orders. And anyway, it'll it'll do all the solving for you. Um, like I said, bandpath, uh, all pass, all pass is a weird filter. It passes all frequencies, but it shifts phase. It's kind of a weird thing. Um, uh, band pass. You can look at all the different topologies, linear phase, transitional Gaussian to 12, 12 dB. Wow. Let's see what's that look like. Oh, this is weird thing here. And uh, yeah, it looks like a standard Salon key to me. Anyway, maybe it's different. Anywho, here's the Salon key one. Oh, Salon key, multiple feedback. Maybe it's just different values just slightly different values and stuff. Anyway, I can encourage you to go to the TI site here and play with all of these filters and do anything you want. And nobody in the right mind will be designing filters. You just go get them. It's like nobody in the right mind does long division. You just grab the calculator. <laughs> all right. And the last resource I want to point out is um, a book that TI did. Um, Op Amps for Everybody. And in Op Amps for Everybody on chapter 16, <laughs> it's a big book, uh, Active Filter Design. And this is just as good or probably better um, than the other resources I just talked about. Uh, it does have a lot of the uh, polynomials and lots of different um, Lots of different topologies, um, different order roll-offs. Uh, it's it's an extremely extremely well done treatise. Um, so anyway, I recommend you uh, read that, and uh, it's a little bit more mathy than well, I would say the Lancaster book kind of mathy too. But this is kind of more m modernized. I think Lancaster showing a little bit of its age, but. Um, I think this is, if you kind of want to do it in modern terminologies, this is probably a better uh, a better book to be taking a look at. Uh, but yeah, it's got everything you want in there. And it's probably all of the math behind their uh, online calculator and stuff, right? My probably is written by the same guy, I would imagine. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's, it's really good too. <laughs> 